let's talk about your stance when you're squatting. So some people will tell you uh, to squat really wide because it improves your leverages. Some people will tell you to squat really narrow because it challenges your mobility a little bit. And the only point I want to illustrate to you today is that it's it matters, but it doesn't matter which one you go with as long as you have a reason for doing it. So let's start wide and we'll come in. So wide squats to an extent, like if I come out this far, this is apparently very wide, right? And this is difficult for me. So I need to be able to overcome not only the tension in my pants, but also in my adductors elongating here. And I need to find the uh, hip mobility to get down here. So wider stances are a little bit easier for hip mobility. It, the, it changes the orientation of the hip joint, right? And it allows you to access more depth. The, the other side of this is if you're going for maximal weight, you get this wide base of support and you can, you can sit back a little bit more. You don't have to rely on your knees quite as much and you load your, your bigger glutes, hamstring kind of muscles. And then the, the third thing that you would look at here is if your hips are okay, but your knees don't feel very well, this kind of takes some tension off of them. As long as you're not driving them out like this or letting them fall in like this. So wide stances, good for uh, maximal lifts and good for saving the knees or taking stress off the knees. Generally, what I'm recommending is a, about shoulder width or maybe a little outside shoulder width. So the feet are much more underneath me here. I wouldn't consider this narrow. I would consider hip width a little bit more narrow, but this shoulder or slightly outside shoulder width is, is good for most people, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm optimizing leverages. There's a little bit of knee, there's a little bit of hip loading. Um, I, I'm not too bent over. I don't put too much stress on my low back or anything like that. Um, this is just the, the nice general pattern that I would recommend. And then narrow. So why would I do narrow? Narrow is good for challenging your mobility. So. I need a lot of hip mobility to be able to squat really low this way with a narrow stance. And the only way I can get that is if I have the motor control to control my hips underneath my body, oppose gravity and not lose my balance. So if I start to fall forward, it's really difficult to get all the way down, right? Okay, so you'll see people who hold their breath a lot. You'll see people who rotate their feet outward when they try to do it. Um, those people are struggling with this narrow stance. Now, I wouldn't say that everybody who does a narrow stance has to squat as low because as we talked about, it requires more mobility. So do not force yourself into the same depths that you might do with a narrow squat. You can stop a little earlier. I can even take this narrow, maybe even slightly more narrow than the shoulder width, but not quite hip width narrow. I can take this and I can do squats with this. And this is still a squat, okay? Even though I'm not going with my hip crease going below my knee, even though I'm not going lower than parallel, I'm still getting a really good training effect. And depending on what I'm looking for, I might actually get a better training effect than squatting deeper. What do I mean by that? So if I squat deep, I load the muscles a lot and they will get really tired. If you've never done it before and then you do an, a set or, or a, a day of exercise with deeper squatting and generally lighter weight, <laughs> you, you'll, you'll notice those muscles, or at least for me, they get instantly sore. It's like they start to cramp up and they start to seize up and you're like, okay, I'm done. Um, so that depth is really good for training muscles. But if I'm looking for force development, or I'm looking for power. Let's say I have a basketball athlete. Let's say I have a professional basketball athlete who's seven feet tall, much higher than this camera's going, right? Um, as they squat down, 
their levers, their levers are really long. Their femurs are really long, right? And so those forces get amplified because the joints are further away from each other, right? So a seven footer squatting body weight is a lot harder than me squatting body weight because I'm pretty short and I have what we, <laughs> as I got from John Fast, we call good lifting levers, AKA you're short, right? So I come down and I can just do this, right? <laughs> I can load my pelvic floor, I can load my quads, my hamstrings, my glutes, really good still, even if I stop right here and I stay pretty narrow, okay? Now a basketball player has to jump high and at no point are they squatting all the way down below parallel. So this narrower stance challenges their mobility, teaches them how to maintain it, but also gives them a training effect under it. So you could use a narrow stance very effectively for still just developing power output, for replicating vertical jump positions and getting a training effect out of your squats.